this is the virtual caddis this is a very um it's one of the most versatile flies you could probably get um if you just go with this base pattern here this is a bit probably about as basic as you can get but the color variation and then the additions you can add you know rib you can add a flashback you can add different wing materials different colors of beads so the actual fly is endless uh, caddis pattern is, is one of the most probably one of the most popular used patterns going and but most of them are done with dubbing i like to do them with virtual nymph skin you can see you can see right through that there very translucent very natural looking um so here we go the hook i like for this it's a, a relatively new hook is a it's a fasna it's a 120 it's actually a clink hammer hook but it's a I think it's the wire's far too thick for a clink hammer, um, but I, I've yet to see a better caddis hook, uh, and I'll certainly be using it for that. It's got a lovely gape. Uh, this is a size 14. Don't tie any bigger than this. Uh, 14, 16s and 18s, and it's a 3 mil bead uh, from Get Slotted. Now, to make it uh, translucent, obviously with the black hook there, um, you can do that, and it looks like a kind of, uh, almost like a kind of vein going down the middle of the, uh, so it's quite nice like that as well, but I like to cover the hook up. So I use my uh, uni stretch in white. Now we get some good news this week, just found out that it's, um, Lucy and it trout line has this in stock, I've been having to get it, people have been bringing it back from America for me, um, but I've now found that we can get it from uh, Lucy and so he's got all the colours, I got black in today from him um, and it looks absolutely fantastic so just spin the thread uh, the uni stretch away from you to keep it nice and thin this is really, it's not so much to make a body it's it's more to just cover the hook up but you do get a slight taper bring it right up to the head nice and even and then just whip, whip finish that off <clears throat> So that's your base. You could add colour to that, like I do in the garden fly, etc. You could, you could put a darker rib or whatever. There's loads of variations. It's but this is a, I'm just going to show you the base pattern today, and then over the next few weeks or months, I'll uh, we can vary it up a bit. Um, so just as I do with most of my patterns, really move the hook about to suit. Don't try and um, keep it in the one position. Uh, so I'm using white uh, nano silk. I use the size 12, just need a couple of wraps of this right at the back, no build up, no bulk, two or three wraps does you, that'll lock it in, don't use scissors, It's always use a scalpel with nano silk, and now what we want to do is tie in the nim skin, now what you want to do with the nim skin is tie it at a slight angle, uh, to tie it and then tie it in with a point. So twist the thread towards you and that'll tighten it up. So away from you slackens the thread off, towards you tightens it up or clockwise. And you just catch your, offer your point up to the top of the hook shank. Couple of small turns and then pull the nim skin back. Take your thread right off the back of the uni stretch. And that'll lock it in. And then bring your thread back up. I don't rub this fly. Uh, you can do, as I say, there's many, many variations. So that's you ready to tie. So you've got your thread up at the head now and you're ready to wrap your uh, nymph skin up. So what, what you do is you get your the point, the 45 degrees facing away from you. Um, and then your first turn underneath, pull it really tight. Put your thumb and top, bring it under. Second one again, pulling it tight. And now this is where you can put the shape into the body by just really relaxing the num skin. Really take the pressure off it. You can see there how the thickness of the num skin really increases there just by taking the pressure off it. Again, you're only covering 50% of the last one, so there's a line kind of halfway up. 
nice and loose to get your nice nim shape but keeping your seg segmentation really nice It'll only take three or two or three turns and that'll be you up at the head now bring it right up to the head now how I tie it off is tighten your vise right up you're going to cover this up anyway so bring your nim skin round really really pull it in tight bring your nano salt round one turn two turns that's all you need to lock it in now we're going to um, put UV on this fly so basically what I want to do is um, you can do these in batches um, so basically what we'll do now is just whip finish this on two, three get that out of the road bring the scalpel on and then to cut the numska scissors underneath pull it down tight and give it a real good tug and cut it off so that's your base done now you could do this in advance prep them all up um, and but what I do is I'm going to give it a coat of UV varnish what that does is it soaks into the num skin and it really makes it look translucent you can see there it's still quite dull even in the, the light so I've got my normal solar is solar is thin very small drop on the top mirror dispenser Sorry, I've not used this today. It wasn't. Oh, that's far too much. But anyway, if you do put too much on it, just give it a wee dab of your finger and get your. I use a sable brush out the art shop. Just a very thin coat. You're really just wanting to use it to soak in, but it's also going to because you've not got a rubber, whatever. It gives you that wee bit of protection. This is not only a good grayling fly, but it's also a great uh, trout fly. So, obviously. Yeah, the trout teeth are a bit rougher than the grey lint. So just a nice fine coat. As I say, it's really just to soak it in. You can see the shine and it's, it starts to soak in. So just give it a couple of seconds before you hit it with a torch. Just to let it soak in that wee bit more. And then hit it with your torch. As I say, get yourself a decent... Some of the guys are, say that some of the UV doesn't they set, I think a half of the time it's because they're, tor they're using these wee pen torches and they're not really any good get yourself a decent torch, now as I say you could do these in batches and, and, and just leave it there so that's your base, you could actually fish it like that um, and you would be probably fine now, but as all fly tyres we always like to make things a wee bit more fancy uh, because I'm going to be, because uh, this is a black headed one um, I think this is the most natural looking when you lose it, use a black bead, but also do them in copper and gold. Um, so this is black nano silk. Very rarely use coloured thread. I only really use white most of the time and just colour it with a pen. Um, now we're going to put some wings, legs, or whatever you want to call them. It's just an indication. Now what we do here is we use a partridge feather. That's your feather off the bird. I don't buy loose feathers, I actually buy a skin um, and then take the feathers off. So you want to strip off the fluff. I'll show you once I've done that. Get all the fluff off. Now what you do is you hold the tip and then draw the feathers that you want for the legs back. You don't want too many. If there's any too long you can take them off. That's probably about enough. So if you just get that them there like that and you then want to cut the top of this piece off. I'll just take it out of the camera to do that. And then you fold the fold the feathers back. And that gives you your V. And then what you want to do is offer it up to the uh, with this with the stem of the 
the stalk of the feather right in the middle of the bead and then you've got the legs going down the side 50-50 uh, <clears throat> you can use up feathers here because although that's very long I actually prefer them a wee bit longer so you you're pinching and pinching almost a pinching loop a couple of see how you're see how the feathers are looking that's just a wee bit long uh, but because you've wrapped it very loosely you can still pull them in slightly just till you get to a, a length that you like that's a bit better looking remembering that we're putting dubbing on this as well so another couple of turns tight turns that just locks it in cut off your waist now I've got some uh, new dubbing to that to try this week it's uh, from a British company down in Essex um, it's I'm not actually quite sure how you pronounce it uh, Vicuna possibly um, but they've got their own website but the dubbing looks absolutely lovely it's very nicely dyed it's actually made from alpaca, which is a kind of goat type animal. <laughs> and this is the actual dubbing. It's very black, quite spiky. Um, it looks very fine, but it is actually quite coarse. I think it would be good for uh, quite a lot of bodies and uh, especially on collars, like what I'm going to use it for now. Um, and I'm going to try it with uh, my, tub, my uh, touch dubbing technique. Just pull your thread down, get your, it's the uh, Dubbing Wax Super Tacky. Just kind of dab it on your thread. Get a good amount on there, but if you've got any big lumps, uh, obviously take that off. Then all you want, don't scrimp, you want a right good handful of dubbing. Tease it out a wee bit, and then all you're doing is just going down your thread. Just dubbing it onto the thread. It's as simple as that. No dubbing loop, no split thread, no nothing like that. It's the easiest way I've found to apply dubbing to a collar. Now then what you want, you want these legs flat. You want to hold them back. And then because you've got the nano silk, no build up. Just trap in anything that's there. And then once you've that looks quite a lot, but we'll be, and then pull that back. Get your thread. One, two, three. That'll do us. Dab a solarize. Just use it, what was remaining in your brush. You don't need an awful lot. This is just an extra precaution. You can actually pull the nano salt right in, and I'll show you what that does to the collar. So. Again, very, very thin. Because it's black, black bead, black thread, you won't see it. Then do your whip finish. Now, before you cut that off, hold your bead and pull. And you will not be able to do that with any other thread. It will snap. What that does is, because we've not done a dubbing loop or a split thread or whatever, people say, oh, the dubbing will all come out. Well, that absolutely locks it in place. I can assure you that. Now, what to do is just pick out if there's any long bits or whatever, and then just draw that back, and you'll see how lovely that'll be in the water. Just an indication, not too heavy, nice and spiky, but you won't get a lot of water resistance. So, that's basically my very basic virtual caddis.